James Moriarty, the Napoleon of crime and the great nemesis of Sherlock Holmes. But what about the James Moriarty of Fate Grand Order? How well does he compare to his literary counterpart, and what grade would I give his depiction? Let's find out, shall we? James Moriarty is an archer-class servant, which seems even weirder than Sherlock Holmes being a ruler. Both of them do comment on this, stating that the caster class suits them better. But like with Holmes, this too gets an explanation in-game. The story is that Moriarty has been merged with another being, that of a character named Max from a German opera called Der Freischutz, or The Freeshooter. Moriarty's spirit origin was fused with Max by the demon god Baal to assist in their plot during the Shinjuku Singularity. Now, Moriarty from the Sherlock novels did actually have a gun that resembled a cane, though this is only mentioned in passing and we don't actually see Moriarty use it. Other than that, though, and this fusion of Moriarty and Max, Moriarty getting the Archer class would make absolutely no sense. Moving on to Moriarty's design, his FGO appearance is that of a middle-aged man who looks more than a little shady, wearing a fancy suit that does more or less resemble what the original Moriarty might have worn. He is also holding what appears to be that cane gun I mentioned earlier in his left hand. But what about all of those butterflies? Well, those are what are called Ulysses butterflies. The explanation given for these being a part of Moriarty's design is that since butterflies emerge from caterpillars, that they change form to reveal their true self, this is meant to symbolize how Moriarty's name is initially hidden under the guise of Archer of Shinjuku. In other words, it is a metaphor, and so falls under creative license. The spiderweb that you see behind Moriarty, however, is more than that, since Sherlock himself compares Moriarty to a spider, weaving an intricate web of deception and connections through his various schemes. As for Moriarty's physical appearance, he is described as a seemingly frail older man who seems deceptively harmless, but is in fact fit and a capable fighter. The Moriarty of FGO does look more obviously evil than this, which is lampshaded in Moriarty's very first scene in Shinjuku when he calls himself a shady-looking old man. Lastly, there is his main weapon, that giant machine gun, rocket launcher, laser firing thing. Obviously, such a weapon does not exist in our own world, much less the world of the late 19th century, and so this falls under being cool rather than accurate. What is notable, though, is that it is shaped like a coffin. This is meant to be a reference to the fact that in their great showdown at the Reichenbach Falls, Moriarty was able to kill Sherlock, though at the cost of his own life. At least, that was Sir Arthur Conan Doyle's original intention, but he received such a fan backlash to Sherlock's death that he ended up eventually having it so that Sherlock faked his death instead. Basically, Conan Doyle had to deal with the late 19th century equivalent of internet rage, but Moriarty drags that coffin-shaped weapon around as a reminder that in the original canon, he was meant to be the one who ended Holmes's life. As a whole, when it comes to Moriarty's design, certainly more creative license has been taken than with Holmes, though he does at least look like a criminal mastermind, even if he isn't actually supposed to according to the original lore. Getting into Moriarty's skill set, his first skill is the free shooter. Now, I mentioned before that the servant Moriarty has been merged with Max from Der Freischutz, and Der Freischutz translated into English is the free shooter, so this skill is meant to be the connection between Moriarty and the character Max. As for the skill itself, it provides notable buffs like Ignore Invincibility, Ignore Defense, Star Gather Rate, and a Star Bomb. This actually is quite a solid connection to Der Freischutz since the plot of that opera features some magic bullets that home in on their target, having been made so under demonic influence. Moriarty's second skill is End of the Spider's Web. Now this, unlike the first skill, is actually relevant to Moriarty himself. I already mentioned earlier how Sherlock compared Moriarty to a spider at the center of a massive web, so the name at the very least checks out. As for the skill itself, it requires stars to use, stars he can get from his first skill, but gives him MP charge, MP strength, and the ability to change the alignment of other party members to evil. That last bit in particular is pretty neat, but Moriarty is more of a hidden mastermind who supports already evil people in their work, rather than corrupting people to evil. This alignment change bit, however, was only added as a skill upgrade later on, and is more for gameplay purposes. What gameplay purposes? Well, that relates to his third skill, Evil Charisma, which gives the usual attack buff that other charisma skills do, but then effectively doubles that attack buff for evil-aligned characters. Now, this is a solid skill for Moriarty from a lore perspective, since he is meant to be the one who helps other criminals with their efforts. But if Moriarty isn't already paired together with evil-aligned characters, then he can't get much use out of this skill. This is why that bit that allows him to temporarily change fellow party members' alignment to evil was added to a second skill. 
So while his third skill is undoubtedly a solid choice from a lore perspective, Moriarty's second skill is one that has traded lore accuracy for better gameplay. I'd say that gameplay is more important for, you know, a game, but this video is about lore, and so it hurts Moriarty a bit. Moriarty's noble phantasm is The Dynamics of an Asteroid, which in the world of Sherlock Holmes is actually a book that Moriarty wrote. Now, we don't actually know what is in the book because Sir Arthur Conan Doyle didn't elaborate on that. All we have to go on is that it is a book that Moriarty wrote and that it involves mathematics. Well, and also that one of the potential inspirations for Moriarty, Simon Newcomb, wrote a few books on astronomy, which naturally would involve asteroids. Anything beyond this is guesswork, since further detail was simply not provided. Moriarty having wrote this book is only mentioned in passing by Sherlock in one of Doyle's works. As for the MP itself, while Moriarty's dialogue does make a reference to The Final Problem, the Sherlock Holmes book that Moriarty features in, that's basically it. I mean, I guess the city in the background is London, but at this point I'm just grasping at straws. The simple fact is, this MP doesn't have much of any connection to Moriarty himself, having more to do with the plot events of the Shinjuku singularity. Regarding Moriarty's kit as a whole, like with Sherlock, I find myself covering a servant that I don't actually have in my Chaldea. Funnily enough, it was actually harder for me to find Moriarty on my support list than it was for Sherlock, despite Moriarty actually being a pretty good single-target archer, and that Sherlock has become increasingly obsolete now that we have monsters like Ibuki Doji or Melusine. Anyway, Moriarty is a capable fighter on his own, but he also has that notable buff to fellow evil-aligned characters, which suits his character being a criminal mastermind. In other words, Moriarty's skill set allows him to deal out punishment all on his own, but he further supports other evil characters in their own efforts. It is a fairly decent connection to his lore, but there are some issues. Moriarty's craft essence is also the dynamics of an asteroid. Well, that's a first. His MP and craft essence have the same name, and so the same significance to the character, but it is the actual book this time, so hooray? There really isn't more for me to say about it that I didn't say already. Couldn't they have picked something else? His cane gun? The Reichenbach Falls? Anything? This just feels lazy. Moving on to his characterization, there is something I need to say about the original Sherlock Holmes novels, specifically about how they are written. Those novels were written from the perspective of Sherlock's friend, Dr. Watson, and so whenever Watson was not actually present for events, he had to rely upon Sherlock's own words. When it comes to Moriarty, this is all there is, because Watson never actually meets Moriarty. Moriarty himself only actually appears in two of Conan Doyle's novels, though he is referred to in a few others. What does this mean? Well, it means that there actually isn't much source material for Moriarty, and all of it is secondhand from Sherlock. This is actually mentioned in FGO. Sherlock specifically wanted to limit how much he told Watson about Moriarty in order to limit his notoriety. The other side of this coin, though, is that because of this, Moriarty has more room for creative license. The result of this is that we actually see more of Moriarty in various Sherlock adaptations than we did in the original novels. So when it comes to Moriarty's personality, we only have some bits to go off of from the original source material. He is described as a ruthless criminal mastermind working behind the scenes, and an intellectual match for the great detective. He seems to have no regard for the lives of others, is full of a considerable amount of malice, and excellent in a variety of skills a criminal could make use of, acting, invention, deception, and physical combat. In short, Moriarty is an extremely dangerous individual who has all the makings of a serious villain. But what about his character in Fate Grand Order? Well, when it comes to being a criminal mastermind, he certainly fits the bill. The story that Moriarty debuted in, Shinjuku, is also the one that best highlights his talents. His entire scheme revolves around his good half befriending the protagonist, while his evil half took up the role of the main villain. This lulls Chaldea and even Sherlock Holmes into a false sense of security, though Holmes at least is suspicious of the good Moriarty. At the climax of the story, it is ultimately the protagonist and the weaknesses of Moriarty's spirit origin that does him in, not Sherlock. In fact, Moriarty defeats Sherlock outright, striking in a way that he did not expect. Moriarty does indeed prove to be a man of many talents, which he uses often to advance whatever scheme he is up to. Another thing that happens in Shinjuku is the bit of the story where Moriarty builds a bomb in one of Phantom of the Opera's puppets, using only materials he could find on hand, and so revealing his impressive technical skills. Lastly, his master plan of trying to destroy Earth in order to commit the greatest crime in history would have caused the death of billions, something that he doesn't seem too bothered about. Moriarty has a goal that he is trying to achieve, and the cost of reaching that goal does not seem to matter to him. 
In other words, in personality, the Moriarty we see in the Shinjuku singularity matches up with his literary counterpart pretty well. As for Moriarty's involvement in other stories in FGO, he continues to get up to all sorts of mischief and no good behind the scenes. The most recent event this was seen on NA was in the Halloween Trilogy event, which was a replay of old events, so it isn't actually new, but it was new to me, okay? So let's just say it's new. Anyway, Moriarty is the hidden mastermind behind the events of the third Halloween event, and gets punched by Mecha Ellie for his trouble. Another less recent event he gets involved in is the Holy Grail Phantom Thief event back in March 2023. When Chaldea finds itself having to steal a heavily guarded Holy Grail from a museum, naturally the cast turns to Moriarty for coming up with an intricate plan on how to commit the heist. And then there was that bit in Summer 4 where Moriarty's help is sought after in order to get past the Aloha Knights, Gawain, Lancelot, and Tristan, at the final casino. Moriarty comes up with a plan to overcome each of them, though the standout example has to be bringing Gareth out to eat away at Lancelot's guilty conscience. A particularly brutal scene, especially by the standards of light-hearted summer events. These are only just a few examples. There are many, many more events where Moriarty makes an appearance either as a major part of the story or as a background player behind all the mischief going on. Whatever the event, if Moriarty appears, chances are he is up to some dastardly comic book villain-like shenanigans that are very fun to watch. Now for the verdict. What grade would I give Moriarty's depiction in Fate Grand Order? Well, it is a bit mixed. His character design and skill set have a mix of solid links to Moriarty, but also some creative license being taken that veers away, especially by having his appearance be that of an obvious villain rather than somebody who could hide in plain sight like the original. I don't entirely understand why they decided to fuse Moriarty with Max from Der Freischutz aside from its relevance to the Shinjuku singularity, but that's the only time it really comes up. His noble phantasm and craft essence sharing the same name feels... lazy. Admittedly, there aren't that many names to work with due to how little Moriarty actually shows up in the original novels, but still, they could have at least come up with something different, right? To not have the MP and the craft essence have the same freaking name? The thing that saves Moriarty's depiction from getting roasted is his characterization, since he is very much a criminal mastermind with a wide variety of talents that he showcases quite a bit during his story appearances. Moriarty is undoubtedly fun to watch, but the fact is his character's overall design just isn't as strong as it was for his rival, Sherlock Holmes. So for a final grade, I am going to give James Moriarty, the Napoleon of crime, a C. I wish I could be nicer to him, but I can't. He won't be the last character I like who I'll have no choice but to give a lower grade to. Anyway, if you liked this video, check out my previous one on Moriarty's rival, Sherlock Holmes. Until next time.